Welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Got another awesome interview for you guys. As always, I have none other than Eddie Solis from It's Casual, group out of Los Angeles. And uh, they've got two albums out, and I'm going to tell you right now, I listened to these guys the other day, was really impressed with their music. If you haven't heard of them, then I'll tell you what, you better get to listen to them. Eddie, how's it going? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. Thanks for coming on the show this evening, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now, you guys are based out of Los Angeles, and you have your new yep. album. You have your new album that's out right now called The, the New Los Angeles 2. Let's talk about the new yep. album right now. Yeah, it's great. The New Los Angeles 2, you know, it's a continuation of The New Los Angeles 1. Both records, you know, spawn from my choice of lifestyle, which is being car free in a, in a car culture in Los Angeles. So, you know, I'm able to uh, cover a lot of ground daily on our subway system and buses, and I'm able to see a lot more than the average person does in a car, you know. And, um, you know, I see a lot of real life, you know. And um, I got inspired to uh, write these records because the city was new again to me because I wasn't driving. I was getting off and on buses and subways in a city that's not really known for public transportation. And so I saw a lot and I got inspired. So that's why I call it the New Los Angeles because the New Los Angeles, it's a new city to me again. So, so that's, that's the catalyst for that title. And uh, yeah, you know, um, I, I really uh, wanted to write something that's extremely uh, hard hitting, aggressive, but also I, I wanted to make it fun, you know, where, and, and short, because I think, you know, people uh, could appreciate something that looks by you and say, hey, let's do that again. And, and that's the case. It's a short record. And yeah, I, I would say it falls into the hardcore punk category. Let's talk about how much the writing process for you goes into this since you are, are you know, wanting to be with one with everybody out there and, and associate with all the, the locals. How is your writing process with it? Have you seen it grow a whole lot more with this new album? Yeah, you know what? It really does. It's, it's, it's a... It's very cohesive to living in the moment. You know, I've learned how to really seize the moment when you're, you know, when you're meeting with people and whether it's a stranger on the street or you're just, you know, dealing with someone in the workplace. I just think that every moment's an experience and it's up to us to let things resonate or not. A lot of times, you know, we're just moving so fast that people just, you know, let things go or overlook things. But I really try to capture every moment that is, you know, uh, happening and uh, find, find a, you know, I get a lot out of the most simplest things. And um, so the writing process was, you know, me trying to encapsulate just my, 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 my daily life. And, you know, my, my, my vocals and lyrics are definitely after the fact. I always write music first. And uh, I'm always playing guitar. I love writing riffs. I listen to a lot of uh, Black Flag and Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. You know, a lot of old Metallica, old yeah. Slayer, you know, the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I express myself, I love to do it in the most aggressive way. And so it's casual is, is me letting out my demons. But while I'm playing guitar, I'm coming more from a Hendrix and a, and a, a Kiss and a Black Flag. But I also want to keep, you know, a, um, a craft to it where... You know, that's where, you know, early Metallica and Flair comes in because, you know, it's, it's fast, hard hitting and, you know, it's uh, cohesive. All the songs are cohesive. And, and that's what I feel special about the new Los Angeles, too. I got to say, uh, I, like I said, I listened to this the other day. And like you said, the, the first song on here, it, it's hard hitting. It grabs your attention. And the, this, the CD is really good. Uh, I'm really impressed with it. it. It has a lot of diversity, a lot of, you know, different types of songs on here. I really like it, and we'll be playing it on the show a lot for you guys. Fantastic. Other than yourself, Eddie, who else is in the band? Well, the, um, the vision of It's Casual, you know, um, I, take the, I take on all the work of writing and uh, uh, the music and the lyrics, oh. uh, name, naming the band, all the band business. Uh, and I have a, a drummer who is unnamed that's always, he goes under different names per album, 
and he is the key drummer to the sound. He always records with me, but live because of scheduling. If he can't make it, I have a rotating cast of drummers. It's all local guys, and it just it just really depends on scheduling. Yeah, so it's a two piece. <laughs> That's cool, though. I mean, you, I mean, there's so many musicians out there that uh, have complied their own album and, and did all the instruments on the on the album. Right, right, yeah. I mean, I mean, look at Big Roll with Probot. Look at, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of other artists that have done that, especially in the independent world. You know, it's so crazy these days, Eddie. You, you could sit in your own bedroom and write a full album these days. It, it's just so wild how how it's came along for the digital age and stuff now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really a sign of the times. I mean. You know, I, that's kind of cohesive to the um, fact that I kept the uh, the uh, record short because I feel with um, a lot of things being available to people mm-hmm. because of, you know, internet access and everyone having like a really great phone, an iPhone or an Android or a Google phone. Mm-hmm. I just feel, I just feel that there's, everything's accessible, information, and people are preoccupied with a lot. Even if someone doesn't have a lot going on, and they just want to be entertained. They could watch movies and listen to music and play video games all day and not leave their house. So, you know, fast forward to what you just said. Uh, yeah, you can write a record, record it on software, upload it, it's out. And you bad, know? And bad as I hate to say it, you know, a lot of kids sitting around playing video games these days. I mean, uh, I mean, I play video games. Don't get me wrong, but get off your butts and go support locals. Go, go to these concerts, man. Get out and live. A Absolutely. Bit. <laughs> yeah. Get out and live a little, you know, I know, I think, you know, I, I just wanted to, uh, create a record the New Los Angeles one and two. That was like a one, two punch, you know, just here it is. And if you like it, you're going to say, Whoa, it's over. And if you don't like it, then it wasn't it was only 17 minutes of your life. Exactly. Okay. When you're playing guitar and stuff, I mean, I'm sure you've come with a lot of riffs. You ever got to the point where you said, "Okay, I'm not happy with this. I've already done this." When you hit a when you hit a block like that, what do you normally do to get yourself out of that? Oh man, well I'll tell you what I do, and I do it almost every night. You know, I'm I'm sincerely a fan of music, completely right. a fan of music. Just for example, last Thursday I went to the Whiskey to see Los Lobos for their 40th anniversary show. Last Friday I went to see the Misfits and the Dickies playing in Los Angeles. Saturday, I went to the Misfits and Dickies in Orange County. And Sunday, I went to go see a new band called GFP, which um, they played a show in uh, Hollywood. And it's Greg Hessen from Bad Religion on guitar, Tom Davis from BFL, legendary pro skater Tony Alba on bass, and Joey Castillo of Queens of the Stone Age, Stone Age on drums. So I'm always out, you know, going to see. You know, I, I skateboard every day, uh, I play guitar every day, and, you know, and I'm always out at shows or do, or do my own internet show and uh, committed to it. So I'm very inspired. I'm always, you know, I, I spend a lot of my late evenings listening to a lot of music. And, um, you know, I, to be honest, like, I, I try to be as, uh, you know, transparent and truthful as possible. I mean, I think, you know, in the past, I stumbled upon any roadblocks of creating riffs. But now to counter that, I learned about myself. If I'm out watching music and seeing something new or seeing something I've never seen or even just going to a new venue I've never been to, mm-hmm. I'm inspired. And I rarely hit those roadblocks anymore. Just by sitting down and listening to your favorite band or just a new band, how much music can express yourself and how much it can get you out of a rut? I mean, honestly. Oh, yeah, you're telling me. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, it's, it's so weird, you know? I mean, when I look for a sincere approach to guitar, I go back and listen to the old bands all the time mm-hmm. that inspired me to get into music. You know, I mean, and I, I, I said this in the beginning, I mean, it's a lot of old black, it's black flag, you know, it's all the old Metallica stuff with Cliff Curtin. It's all the old Slayer stuff, you know, and, but then again, you know, I mean, it's old Van Halen, you know, just, I got to go to those places to understand the original reason why I got into music. You know, I, I don't want to yeah. take away from this interview or get off subject or anything, but when you said Cliff Burton, I mean, oh my God, he is a bass legend. And exactly, you know, when you hear Cliff Burton play bass, it's like it's talking to you. I, I mean, you got to understand music to understand what I'm talking about. So Exactly, exactly. And let's face it, talk about Metallica. They're a great band. There's a reason why they are where they're at. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're the biggest metal band in the world of all time. You know, and... 
I think, you know, but let's face it, when you take Cliff Burton out of the equation, it's not the same Metallica. We know that. Agreed. You know, and that's that. I mean, so, you know, I mean, I'm an independent artist, you know, creating, you know, my own music and funding it and, uh, you know, competing with other bands. Even if you're not competing, you're competing, you know, you're, you're trying to, you know, get, a, get ahead and progress and you, you need to put out a good product and, and put on a good show and, and have a good attitude about it. You know, you can't, you can't, um, whatever it is, whatever the challenge is, you cannot get sidetracked or discouraged because it's going to reflect in your playing and what you're, you're making. And I mean, even though I play um, aggressive music, I hope that when someone like you, know, you listen to it, someone from Kentucky or someone from around the world that they say, Hey, you know, this is hard, fast and loud, but it's kind of listenable. It's not, it's easy on the ears. It's coming from some good intention. Exactly. And, and you can tell, and I mean, honest to God, man, you know this just as well as I do. You can tell when a band puts their heart and soul into that CD. You know when you hear it. Exactly. And I'm a music fan, so I feel the same way. This is awesome. Two DJs on here just talking about music. This is what's about, people. This is right here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's casual. The New Los Angeles 2 is out. I'm excited about that. Since you're out in Los Angeles, when you guys play shows or when you can get a show together, do you get a lot of support or how is it? Because I've heard multiple stories uh, about some, you know, it's good, it's bad. What's your take on it? Well, I mean, we've been about a decade and this is our fourth record and it's been consistent. But, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that my band has been around that long and that's just the way I am by nature. I believe in longevity. We've done the world tour. We've always been independent, but we've done the world tour. We've played on the same stages story of the year and bullets and octane you know bands that have gone on to do a lot of stuff we've done out of town dates with mastodon we've done local dates with fi stereo we've toured nationally with Fu Manchu. you know we've put some work in you know and, and got out and, and done it so i feel that because i'm committed to my craft and i've been patient that with this fourth record and a decade into it you know it's it's definitely here to stay and when we play locally it's usually the troubadour that's that's my favorite place to play in los angeles and i hold 500 and, and you know we pretty much fill up fill it up every time we play we do pretty well in our home we get a lot of support and i'm grateful for that what can fans expect from its casual show from you guys i'm all about you know forward thinking and progressive and forward moving energy but one thing that i draw from the classic older bands like a metallica or van Halen or kiss is and I and I, I live by this through through creating hardcore punk rock is the same the same motto is what you hear on the record it's going to be a different experience live it's going to be tight but it's going to be harder faster and louder and you're just going to like you know feel like it's a different experience than listening to it at home and to me that's important because if you're not doing something different than on the record then what's the point of going exactly I couldn't agree more exactly thank you. I totally agree with you, man. Why would you want to go out and put an album out and then play live and it sound totally nothing like it at all? You know, exactly. You have your own show. Let's talk about that a little bit. Tell everybody what's that about, uh, Eddie, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, the show is called Los Angeles Nista. N-I-S-T-A, Los Angeles Nista. And the show has been running a year long, and it's facilitated by SkidRowStudios.com. So everyone could listen and watch live as they happen. And uh, they could also download the app on iPhone and Android. Listen and watch live then. Uh, then it goes to an archive on iTunes and on my homepage, Los Angeles Mesa. I just wrapped up my 81st episode today. And in addition to that, the catalyst for me to do a talk show was last year when I uh, received um, attention for putting up its casuals in Los Angeles 1, I um, was grateful and fortunate to you know, get a lot of press, like from NPR and Huffington Post, LA Times, and they were focusing on my message was like, you know, here's a hardcore punk band from Los Angeles singing about the city through a new perspective and through that perspective being driven by taking public transportation. So I received a lot of attention. We put out a video for our first single called The Red Line, which was directed by Rick Kostick of Jackass and Wild Boys. He did an excellent job. We got a lot of attention from that video, which led people to the record and all this press. And I, I, all of a sudden I became this like go-to guy for 
public transportation information. People would Facebook message me or text me, email me, like, how do I get here instead of there? And I guess the MTA, um, you know, schedule was a little intimidating for some people trying to figure out their plan. But um, I was able to help out. And I was like, man, you know, I really like advocating car-free lifestyle. It's really healthy. It's really uh, positive. And so what I did was, I said, you know, I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to create a, a show, talk radio show called a Franco's Vista. And what that is, is every episode, I highlight a certain area of Southern California and Los Angeles. I bring in an in-studio guest. I tell them exactly, you know, we, we talk about the history of, of what we're talking about. If, For example, you know, I had uh, this professional skateboarder on named Derek Fukuhura, and he writes for World Industry. So, he, you know, the first half, we talk about his career. Second half, we talk about his favorite place in Long Beach because, or places to go because he lived there. So then I tell people how to get to all these places without a car because I, because I know. So, you know, when it's all finished, said and done, there's a green message behind it. And that's what it's turned into. Each episode is, uh, it highlights a certain area and that's what it's about. See, I, I wish we had something here like that in Kentucky, but we don't, unfortunately, because if I had transportation like that, I wouldn't be driving. I would just take the bus or something. <laughs> yeah, man, it's cheap, too. You buy a, you buy an easy pass for 84 bucks. You divide, you divide that by 30 days, it's $2.85 to commute unlimited. Because it's insane how much gas is. I mean, honestly, it, it blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, you know what's so funny is when you stop and think, you're like, I'm paying all this money for gas. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and it's going, and you know who, where the money's going, you know, and the richer getting richer. Yeah, I mean, you could pay 40 bucks and fill up on gas. There's 40 bucks of groceries that, that you could have bought. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, my music and my content, the music of its casual and the uh, content of Los Angeles needs to all come from, from a sincere place. I mean, I'm moving forward and I'm going with what I know. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just sharing my passion and enthusiasm with everybody. This is really cool, man, that you draw inspiration from from, from this to write your music about. I, mean, I think that's really cool because you see the, the overdrawn out everyday thing with horror stuff and, and just, you know, things like that. But it's cool that you could take that and turn it into your all's thing. Yeah. You don't want to know something else. You know, I'm a huge music fan, like I said. And I give every band a chance. Yeah. I got to tell you something else. You know, there's a lot of music out there where I kind of stop and I, you know, maybe a newer band. I'm like, wow, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't relate to this. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I, I want to get something real for people co to connect with real life. Now you had mentioned that you had played with one of my favorite bands, Fu Manchu. How was that? Oh, let me tell you something. My relationship with them started, like I received an email. I think it was like through my space a few years back from Scott Hill. And he's like, Hey, I just heard your band. You guys remind me of Blast and Black Flag. Nah. And it's beyond me. Why I haven't heard of you. I really want to play some shows. So they opened the door. We played. That's one of my favorite bands. That is to me, Fu Manchu is one of the best hard hitting, hard, hard rock bands from North America. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think they're, they're just straight up solid hard rock. I like their music because it puts me in mind of early Black Sabbath. It puts me in mind of that, I don't want to say psychedelic music, but it puts you in mind of the 70s music with all the effects and things that they use. I just absolutely love it, man. Absolutely, but to play with them was great. They're a band where when you see them live, it's much different than listening to the record. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the way they attack their guitars. It's the volume of the, the back line on stage. It's the, um, you know, Scott Hill sings a slightly different live than he does on record. And it's exciting because their approach is, the ferocity is amazing. And uh, I don't think people understand that all these guys come from hardcore punk rock, in addition to classic rock. Yeah. And that's kind of my trip, too. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to ask me my, my two favorite bands that, that, I, that I think are important and that I, I'm influenced, you know, if you ask me my all-time favorite band, it's Kiss, okay? But if you, if you ask me my two favorite bands where I draw from and personally I feel like the two most important bands for heavy guitar music, it's Black Flag and Black Sabbath, you know, and, and they're, I would say they're pretty much in the same boat. Yeah. Well, Black Flag came out, man. I mean, they, they hit your face and didn't really care if you liked it or not. I mean, it, it's here and this is what we got. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, Fu Manchu. I mean, I love watching them play live. I'm such a fan. I go to all their shows, you know? And when I get to play with them, it's just that much more of a treat, you know? I mean, I've shared the stage with them, you know, in L.A., Orange County, Chicago. We've also done stuff in San Diego. Yeah, it's been, been many other places. It's been awesome. But that's cool, you know, band supporting bands, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they you know, they're an established band. They, um are just genuine. They, uh, you know, reached out to me. They took the time to do that and, and uh, brought me to the circle. And, you know, we're all great friends. And I was so happy, man. I uh, When the Ryan Fest happened over the summer, you know, I, I was getting a lot of friends sending uh, pictures of um, the, the uh, photos as, as they were posting real time because Bob Balk, the lead guitarist, he was wearing his casual shirt at the festival while he was playing. That's awesome. And that was awesome. That was so awesome for me because, you know, that was a huge thing. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's respect right there, man, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Now, you, you said you have Los Angeles Nista, which is that's your, that's your uh, online talk show. Now, when does this air and when can people catch it? Every Monday night, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. at skidlowstudios.com. And in addition to that, if you go uh, to the Los Angeles Nista page, just Google Los Angeles and send it to the iTunes page and my homepage, and all my archives are there. There's 81 episodes. For the people out there who support It's Casual, when it's all said and done, what, how do you want them to remember you by? I want them to uh, remember us by what, you know, when they see us walking away from a show saying, you know what, these guys play harder, faster, louder, and actually sweat on stage. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, while being committed, to their craft, it's fun and it's super approachable, and you know everyone walks away happy. Eddie, what do you think it's casual brings to music? I think uh, it's casual brings real life. I think uh, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we I haven't changed my sound in in a decade. Yeah, and and um, I'm proud of the fact. I think I think that what I bring uh, as a musician, uh, you know, being through it's casual is is the most sincere approach to heavy guitar playing. And really, you know, being able to respectfully give a nod to Greg Ginn and Black Flag, especially Greg Ginn as the source of Black Flag, but the source like, you know, being able to give him a nod through my music because he's been so influential in me. Uh, I think I bring a relevant nod to Greg Ginn through, through, you know, guitar riffs. You know, I don't think, to be honest, you know, I don't think there's any other band out there playing that gives Greg Ginn a nod through their guitar playing. And I think that, you know, to be honest with you, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of bands that will try something and they move on to the next thing and then they break up, you know, when you talk local bands. So, you know, I, I think I'm able to share what Greg did for guitar playing through my music. And I try to do it where I'm not copying him, but I just, you know, you hear the influence. I was talking with Rex Brown not long ago who was on the show and he, and he said it, and I agree totally with him, and, and you've probably seen this too since the decade that you've been in music. Usually a band will put out one album, and then that's it. Then they're done. Yeah. They're gone. I mean, out of we, I've been around a decade with this casual, and locally, in my same circle, there's been bands that have, people I know that have had three bands in that time. Yep. It's just like, it's like you know, it's like, I don't know, you know what the deal is, but I, I just think whatever you do in life, it's like, you know, I'm just proud to say that it's casual is a decade in, four records in and my radio shows 81 episodes in one year in, you know, I'm really into longevity. I'm not trying to do one thing and, and be done in a year. I want to build a solid foundation. So many bands are so scared to go outside the box. They're afraid that, Oh, you're a poser or this and that. Who cares? Well, it's your music. Well, yeah. You know, a lot of bands in the underground heavy scene, they come up with an elitist attitude, Yeah, you know? And it's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm in that circle, but I'm not scared to say that. Kiss is my favorite band. Yep. It, I mean, what's wrong with that? And people look at you, you know, all these hipsters look at you like, you're weird. It's like, dude, I don't care what you think. You're a hipster. You're going to be into something else in two years anyway. Exactly. You won't even be into heavy music. You'll be into, like, dance music again because you're lame. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, it's like, I mean, I care about hardcore punk rock. I care about rock. I care about rock and roll. You know? You know, I'm, um, you know, I love American culture. You know, I love, you know, everything that, you know, America, you know, rock and roll, Chuck Berry, the Ramones, Kiss, Van Halen. Those are all American bands. You know, Metallica. You, you said that you were 81 shows into your uh, uh, radio show. Is that correct? 
yeah, I produced three episodes today, and I, I and the last one I did today was eighty one episode, eighty first. That is amazing, man. That's really awesome. I've been doing Bod's Mayhem Hour. January will make two years for me. Oh, congrats! And, and I've been hitting this hard and heavy, and I've had a lot of great musicians on here, a lot of big national bands. You know, people said that it wouldn't work for me, and you know what? That's good. I like all the negativity. I'll take it because that gives me more fuel to succeed more. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and what I learned, look, it's kind of like when you put yourself out there as you have, you know, there's always going to be people that don't like you for no reason. Yep. Look at these huge bands, you know, I mean, take someone like Michael Jackson. A lot of people like them. A lot of people don't. Right. Yep. Howard Stern. A lot of people like them. A lot of people don't. There's always going to be that. And you know what? People, whatever, whatever the deal is, you know, I just put my head down and keep trekking forward. I'm not going to take things personal. Exactly. I never do. Like I said, like I said before, we started this. Much respect to you for doing this because you're promoting your band, you're promoting what you want to do, and I respect that in a person because so many people, so many people these days, they just don't do it. They they back off for some reason, and that drives me up the wall. Feel for your passion yeah. and go for what you want. Exactly. And look at the end of the day, you know, music brought us together, man. A guy from LA, a guy from Kentucky, and it, and we're yeah. come from different walks of life, but. The thread is music, and we're bonding off that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I, I just love to sit here and talk with bands and musicians just about music and just everyday things, man. It, it's just, you know what, what it's real with music. You know what I'm talking about. Awesome. When you guys play a show and fans come up to you that, that dig your music and say, hey, your music has helped me out through a tough time, what does that mean to you when you hear that? You know what? That's, that's a big deal to me because... You know, you know, it's priceless is people's time. Pe- people could buy your stuff, buy your product, and take it home, and you make some cash, and it's great. Mm-hmm. But when people talk to you about the, your music, and they explain how they took it in, and it resonated with them, and it's like, it just makes them happy, or it does something for them, motivates them. You know what? That's what it's about. It's about, it's about taking what you know, and me just, you know, throwing it out the other end, through, through my musical influences and then someone else receiving it and then letting it resonate. It, it just means that the communication's working. I want to thank you so much for taking time out and doing this interview with me this evening. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. You have a ton of support here from me and Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. If there's anything at all we can do for you, and me, do not hesitate to reach out to me because I will do it for you guys. Oh, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Hey, man, that's not a problem. That's what, hey, that's what we're in this for, Eddie. We're here to, to connect bands and, and threads and things like that and, and have a, you know, uh, contacts and everything. This is what this show was for. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, Eddie, before I let you go, could you please tell everybody how they can get a hold of you guys to say we like your music, buy your merch, and again, your radio show link again? Yeah, if you want to uh, buy uh, this casual music, go to the store. Just um, It's bluecollardistro.com forward slash it's casual. And in addition to that, uh, you could go to uh, skidrowstudios.com for my radio show forward slash Los Angeles Nista. Eddie, before I let you go, will you care to do a promo for my show? Absolutely. This is Eddie Solis from It's Casual, and you're listening to Bob's Mayhem Hour. Thank you so much for doing this interview again. Like I said, you have total support from from me and Bod's Mayhem Hour New City Radio. Thank you so much, Eddie, for being on the show, dude. Hey, take care. Everybody stick around. We've got some music coming up from It's Casual. If you get a chance to check these guys out on tour, either here in Kentucky, Texas, wherever you're at, L.A., give these guys a chance to go out and check them out. Really solid music, and I'll tell you what, you won't be disappointed when you hear them. So stick around. We've got some more music, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. Later, guys.